Hello everyone, my name is Jasmine McCoy and welcome to my channel. If you are new here, thank you for clicking in to drop by, but if you're a returner, it is always nice to have you back. In this video, I'm talking about a very important step in the journey that anyone takes when they are applying to medical school, and this is studying for the MCAT. Of course, you know, if you're going to try to apply for medical school, there are a couple of things that you need to get on your plate. And there's two numbers that really, really, really impact and define your application. And as much as we don't want to say that they matter, they really do. So one of those numbers is your GPA. Another one of those numbers is your MCAT score. And I'm going to be talking about the three phases that I used when studying for the MCAT and the three phases that many people use because this is what is very, very heavily suggested by the AAMC, by Kaplan, by Princeton, by all of those very big name review and MCAT preparedness organizations. You pretty much do this in three phases. So I'm going to go through those three phases. And just so you know a little bit about who I am, if you are new, I am a woman in medicine. Hey, you can buy it on my Etsy store. Gems Design Boutique. It comes in black, it comes in gray, it comes in white. Women in medicine. And like, I have definitely known that I've wanted to do medicine for a very long time. I am in the process of applying to medical school right now. I am literally in the middle of a two and a half hour break for one of my interview days. And I have been accepted not to one, but two medical schools so far. I'm still waiting to hear on a lot of other schools to get their decisions, but I feel like I have a little bit of, you know, expertise in this matter. A little bit of expertise, a little bit of relatability also. I'm not a, I'm not someone who has been hired out by Kaplan or Princeton or Khan Academy or whatever to talk about the three phases and then say, you should buy our MCAT 513 preparedness course. Like, I'm just a person. I'm just a person who has studied for the MCAT on my own, taken that test, did really well, and have moved on to that next phase of the medical school application journey. So I thought, why don't we just sit and talk about those three phases? And we will get into phase one now, which is content review. Your undergraduate institution created some type of curriculum that prepared you to apply to medical school. You had to take math, physics, organic chemistry, general chemistry, biochemistry, physics. You had, oh, you also had to take English. Prove that you know the, how to read and speak the language that we use primarily here in the United States. They had a long list of things that you had to do, things you had to take, labs that you had to be in, in order to prove that you are ready to apply to medical school. For the entire past four years, you have been learning, you have been studying a little bit for the MCAT. So when I started studying for the MCAT, I had been out of school for one year, but I was able to rely on what it is that I had learned in my physics, in my math, in my organic chemistry, general chemistry, biochemistry, physics courses. I was able to rely on that in my studying because I knew I had already seen it before. And like I mentioned earlier, your GPA, that's built on your scores that you earned in those classes. But now, you're having a standardized test, a standardized test of all these different concepts that the AAMC wants you to know. The MCAT has four sections. Section number one is chemical and physical foundations of biological systems. Number two is critical analysis and reasoning skills, affectionately known as CARS. Number three is biological and biochemical foundations of living systems. And number four, is psychological, social, and biological foundations of behavior. There are nine foundational concepts which can be broken down into 31 individual categories. During your content review, that is when you go through each and every one of them, one through 31. Because if the people creating the test have told you, hey, this is important, 
this is something you should know you should probably take a look at that make sure that you know what you're going into because they have told you explicitly this is important and i know that can be daunting 31 individual categories that you need to go through but the good thing is that you have done this before you have seen this in the past or maybe you're doing it right now if you are still taking courses but you have seen this before so somewhere deep in your brain you have memories of learning this formula of applying this theory you have some prior knowledge that is going to help you with studying you're not going into this completely blind and because of this you can use your old notes but beyond that we live in the age of technology there are millions of options at your fingertips to learn content category number one to learn the amino acids you can go onto images and you will have beautiful pictographs of all 20 amino acids broken up into polar, nonpolar, charged. And you have so much that's out there. Just to let you all know what I used, I used Jack Weston. There are some people who will use Khan Academy. You also, because you're watching this on YouTube and I loved YouTube when I was studying, I can guarantee you no matter what it is that you are looking for, there is some 10 to 15 minute video of that content category explained, of that formula explained on how to use it, when to apply it, of that theory, of that thing in action. And it's going to teach you in a way that is going to be very useful to you. Up next is phase number two. And phase number two is practice questions. One thing that I always told myself is practice makes progress. Not practice makes perfect, but practice makes progress. When you start out, you're not going to be getting everything right. That's why you're studying. You're studying that way you can get better. And you need to be able to appreciate, to rejoice, to celebrate in those little moments of victory. You go from getting three out of eight on the reading passages to getting five out of eight, and then six out of eight, and then seven out of eight. You might not get eight out of eight on your reading passage, but that's okay. You're trying, you're getting better, you are progressing. And that's the most important part when it comes to the practice questions. You are slowly getting better bit by bit. That way, when the real time comes, you are at your performing best. Another thing is that the answer is there somewhere. There are four options, A, B, C, D. The answer has to be there. Even if you don't know what the answer is, you will not get penalized for guessing. It is in your best interest to take a guess. You might be able to, uh, to cut it down. You know it's not B, you know it's not C. Okay, well now the answer is either A or D. Pick one. And as you are practicing getting the answers right, you are also going to be practicing on your timing. For those science sections, you will have roughly one minute and 35 seconds for every question. For the cars section, you will have roughly a minute and 40 seconds for each of those questions in order to complete them. This is a very, very important part of your practice questions. If you are getting your answers right, but it's taking you too long to get through them, as in maybe you are spending two minutes and 10 seconds on each of these science-based questions, then you're going to get some right but then at the end you'll have 10 questions left that you haven't even looked at and now you have to guess at them it's okay practice makes progress you might start out at two minutes and 10 seconds per question but then you'll slowly shave it off you'll know a little bit more you will have spent more time putting those formulas and theorems, whatever, into practice, so you will be able to answer the question quicker. You will have better understanding of how to read and how to interpret the figure that they give you, the Western blot. So it will take less and less time, but only with practice. So what did I do on this section? I bought the AAMC's Complete Online Bundle and I answered over the course of roughly three and a half months I answered over 2,500 questions. That's what I did. It was the most affordable thing uh, when it comes to all of the options that you have out there. 
Uh, another affordable option would be UWorld. A lot of people use UWorld. And just as a note, if you are someone who only is having problem with sections one and two, there are some places where you can buy section specific questions for one and two. That way you're not wasting your time and or money on a section that you know you already do really well at. And a very, very, very important part of this, a very important part of doing practice questions is recognizing and reviewing why you got things wrong by starting a missed questions log, an MQC. And you can do this in Excel, you can do this in Google Sheets. I did mine in Google Sheets, but all you need is five columns. And those five columns are going to have the question, the correct answer, an explanation of why you got it incorrect. Did you not know the formula? Did you misapply the formula? Did you not know the concept? Did you get tripped up on some wording? You're going to put whatever the reasoning is for why you got it incorrect. And then you'll give another column for the explanation of the correct answer. And then the fifth column is going to be what of those, which one of those 31 individual categories was being tested here. That way, if you decide, if you want to, if you have time, you can go back and review a little bit more from category 15 out of 31. Because when you realize and see a pattern of, oh, I'm not really doing well on category 15. I need to make sure I go back. Let's spend 30 minutes looking at whatever it is I've created for category 15. That way I can really submit and make sure that moving forward in these next couple of practice questions that I do, I'm not going to miss as many of them. And finally, phase number three is the practice test. This is a $330 test that you are deciding to take. It is in your best interest to get this done one time and never have to look back at it ever again. We're talking about the real deal. You are paying $330 to take this test. You don't want to have to do that multiple times. If you do have to do that multiple times, that is perfectly fine. In reality, most test prep courses say that you should take five to six practice MCATs. And they also say that if you're looking to get a 520 or above, that you should take 10 or more practice MCATs. You might not have the time to do that. You might not be able to buy all of those practice MCATs. Do what you can. What I did is I had to use my weekends to take my practice test. Practice test on Saturday, review the practice test on Sunday. But maybe not everyone has seven hours that they can dedicate to taking a practice test. Completely okay. Instead of doing it all in one sitting, you could do section one on Monday, section two on Tuesday, section three on Wednesday, section four on Friday. Just so you are getting all of the tests in it's not test-like conditions, but again, it's better than nothing. Going back to that financial barrier of having to find and pay for all of these free practice tests, the AAMC does have a single free practice test that you can use. There are also free practice tests that you can get from, and I do have a list. You can get free practice tests from Kaplan, Princeton Review, Blueprint, Altius, and a host of other um, MCAT preparedness courses. In truth, it is because they want you to take that practice test, see how well or how bad you do. That way you go and you buy whatever MCAT preparedness stuff that they have. Remember this test is scored based on how you do in comparison to the other 85,000 test takers. The sections are scored from 118 to 132, with the middle of the bell curve representing 125. That means a total MCAT could range from 472 to 528, with a mean of 500. That means if you are testing at 500, you are at the 50th percentile. Half of the people taking the test did worse than you, half of the people taking the test did better than you. And when you sit, you think, you wonder, you make a goal of what it is that you are trying to get to. What point do you want? What percentile do you want? And you slowly, slowly, slowly build your way towards there. You can make a MCAT tracker 
and you can see, okay, well, I got this score on this exam, my practice exam number one, I got this score on practice exam number two, this score on practice exam number three. Mark the differences between the different sections. That way you can track how well it is you're doing. Maybe you're lacking in a certain section. But all of this is to go towards making sure that when you step into that room, when you sit down on the real day of your MCAT, that you have an approximate knowledge of where it is that you are going to test because you know you have done this before. You have practiced, you have reviewed, you have put in the work to set yourself up for success. And that's all there is to it. Three easy sections, content review, practice questions, practice tests. You're gonna do great, you got this. If I can get here, I am sure that you can get here. And just have that perseverance knowing that you can and you will succeed. That is everything that I have for this video. If you all like my shirt, if you all like this look, you can, like I said, you can find it on my Etsy store. I will put the link in the below. And thank you very much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Bye.